Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV. I have been reading through the Minor Prophets. It's very interesting. They call them the Minor Prophets, but none of them were minor. They call them minor because they had shorter books. But like Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, they had very lengthy books. Ezekiel. Did Ezekiel go to 52 or 48? Isaiah went to 66 chapters. Jeremiah, I think, went to 52 and uh, chapters, yeah. And Isaiah, 66 chapters, and which is the same number of the number of books in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah, whoa, what a guy. Phenomenal. Some of these small books that just have a couple of chapters, I find principles in them, you know? You can take something that was written in the scripture and look at it, and look at the context of all that's around it. It's like crazy what was going on, yet something was still there. Now in Nahum, book of Nahum, it's page 1159 in my New King James Bible here. And it says uh, something amazing in verse 8. Talked about Nineveh was a waste place. It was like a pool of water before. Now all they flee away and all that. But watch this. This is what I want to say here. Verse, uh, verse 9. Take spoils of silver. Take spoils of gold. Spoil or spoils. For there is no end of treasure or wealth of every desirable prize. Prize is interesting because prize is usually just something you have to fight for or do something to get. And then... The prize comes. I always say the price comes before the prize. You pay the price, you get the prize. So a lot of the prize uh, thing is in our mind, and then we have to pay the price with our life to get it. And, and if you're listening to religious preachers talking about, you know, suffering and you never know and God is what, uh, you know, mysterious and, oh, the suffering and, you know, it's like this low, low estate of living. You got to be kidding me. You need to also feed your mind. Like, look at uh, Secrets of the Rich. I think it's about big properties. Imagine a, 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 an estate that costs $20, $30 million. You know, I'm not going to debate about the money issue now on that, but you have a house that's like, you know, staggering. Someone says, I don't need that. Well, you don't. If you say you don't, you don't. Welcome all you that are coming on. Hit the share button and share this. So the spoil is there of silver, gold, and treasure, and wealth of every desirable prize. It's still there in the midst. Now, you read the rest of it. Nahum, it's a mess. All this judgment, all this what, all this thing with Nineveh. Because the people were crazy and they were doing evil things like we see in our world today, all the stuff that's going on. But here's what I wanted to tell you. And this is like, thus saith the Lord. God has never changed his mind about blessing you. God has never changed his mind about blessing me. He, he does not promise he's going to do it. Numbers 23, 19 says he's not a man that he should lie. He doesn't lie. He doesn't want, he's not going to change his mind. So what he said he's going to do, he's going to do. And many places in the scripture, we see this uh, uh, point that he said, by this you will know that I am the Lord. Malachi 3, 10 to 12, he says, bring the tithes into the storehouse. They'll be meeting my house. There'll be things flowing in my house. My ministers will be taken care of. My, my ministry will be taken care of. And then I'll pour you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to receive it. And prove me in this. See if I'll not do it and I will do it. That's how God is. He's not changed his mind about anything. So we need to get into it. Now we need the touch of the Holy Spirit. I want to say this quickly. We Listen to me, my friends and partners, and beloved members of the ministry and all of you. you. You need the touch of God. He was a fight to stay in his presence. Reading from my book again here. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. There's nothing wrong in your life or in you or with you that more of the Holy Spirit in you, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life cannot cure. There's nothing wrong with you that having more of the Holy Spirit in you, on you, 
moving in your life cannot cure. He will cure anything. Disease, sickness, mental anguish, etc. This, this may be one of the shortest broadcasts I've ever done in my life. I'm in the middle of a very uh, major commerce center here, and I'm just, wow. Uh, anyway, but I just had to come on and say this to you. So the, the Lord wants to touch you in great power. I've been speaking about divine connections. He wants to give you the divine connections that you need, the relationships that you need. I feel like this afternoon I've been praying, you know, and I'm people are saying writing me from all over the world saying they're praying too and we have people in America and Af the African continent, Europe, uh, I don't want to say all the places and, you know, it'll take long to mention everything. You're in Eng London, England, and just everywhere. And uh, so many places, and we're, we're like a big network of a family across the continents of the world. And I'm feeling this today. I'm feeling this prophetically. I'm feeling this. There is a, a void, a gap that needs to be filled Something that's not being fulfilled yet. And I feel like in my young age, <laughs> there's no time to waste on all this and that. You know, I, I, I spend a lot of time studying, a lot of time reading news articles and, you know, on the news I want to read, not listening to the mainstream liars. Uh, but, you know, and, and there's so much going on and I'm combating it and I'm praying over it. I'm taking a stand. But... It takes a lot of time and energy to do that. And I think sometimes it's just, uh, we need to just leave some of that alone and focus on the assignment. Let me prophesy to you. You need to do what God wants you to do. You need to do what your gift and calling is. You need to be working in that. You need to be all in that, all in. There was this movie, uh, James Bond movie, and All In, if you've seen it. You know what, you know what I mean, if you remember the scene. Uh, All In, they were at the table playing, you know, uh, whatever they were doing. All In, All In. You got to go all in to the assignment of God. Funny analogy, but makes sense. All In, you got to be all in it to win it. And what you want as far as friendships, relationships, I'm prophesying all this week, uh, I, if I can, I don't want to make an announcement or what, because God could just shift me and change the thing and give me another word. He's just very spontaneous like a, uh, but I, I feel the weight of this anointing to help you and all of us to get connected with the right people, connected in the right environments, connected in the right flow. Connected in the right thing. And whatever you want and need, God also wants you to have that. He's not neglecting you in that. He hasn't forgotten about you. You could just be all caught up with the wrong people. Now, here's the thing. Here's a, here's a way that you can know who's right and who's wrong by how you feel. How you feel. When you feel grieved and tormented and you're in a warfare and you're struggling... There, it's the wrong situation. I remember one time I took time to, uh, recently, to try to see somebody and they were looking to do something for us in the ministry and things and, and, and it just wasn't at all a, an appropriate candidate for that. And I didn't know, I thought. And I was feeling so disturbed in my spirit, such a warfare. And then when I finally got to talk to them for a minute. It only took a minute to know, no, this is not. So, the necessity of having the right people, the necessity of having the right environment is absolutely crucial for your platform to be built and you to launch from there. So I'm praying supernaturally. Sometimes you don't know how to find all the people, but supernaturally, God will help you find it. Are you glad I'm your prophet here? Are you, are, you, are you glad that I'm praying for you? And I am. Sincerely, I am feeling a weight of this anointing of, of, from heaven to release you into the next season 
of destiny, where you have great people, productive people, purpose-filled people, passionate people, glory-filled people, yes, and they're helping you and you're helping them and everybody's flowing and everybody's producing and everybody's moving together. Also in your personal relationships, your friendships, or if you're, you're a single person that's looking to get hooked up with your destiny partner finally, after all the time that you've been waiting or whatever, that it has to be the right one. It has to be someone, you have to be equally yoked. Now, when Paul said you need to be equally yoked and not unequally yoked, he didn't just mean, you know, about if you're born again or not. I mean, the yoke thing is like you got to be connected in the same thing. You, you can't be like uh, one person has this vision and the other person is totally a different person. You're so, in something else and has no interest in what you're about, your assignment. I mean, that's nonsense. It's not going to work very well. You shouldn't bother with it. Now, Genesis 2.18 said, It's not good for man to be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. Somebody that's in the plan of action that I have, I'll have someone that'll be working in that. And you can get to the point where you just like, you feel the need, you feel that void, the gap, and it's the time for it to happen. But it has to be the right person. So I prophetically release this blockage against anyone who's wrong for you, anybody who's not right for you, anybody that doesn't fit or belong. And God is going to really move in this regard. You're going to see his favor. You're going to see his favor. You're going to see his glory. You're going to see the presence of the Lord taking you to the next place of your destiny. It's coming forth. Get ready for it, my friend. Get ready for it. Be ready for it. Father, for business and sales, according to Isaiah 48, 17, you're going to cause your precious chosen one to have more business. People are going to come to help facilitate them. In friendships that are meaningful and not foolish and silly and not a, time, a waste of time, you're going to have people come forth to be connected with them not good for anybody. You can't succeed in life by yourself. You need the right people. You need the right people. But number one, you need the Holy Spirit. You need His power. You need His anointing. You need His love. You need His glory. You need His inspiration, His revelation, His illumination, His life, His, his, uh, his enablement, you know, His empowerment. And you need His wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that all the things that you want will begin to happen. You cannot make it without him. And you cannot then make it without the right people. Like I said before, you could have money, you could have anointing, but you don't have the right people and you can't proceed. Father, in Jesus' name, cause your favor to, to be released upon your people. In Jesus' name, thank you for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Thank you for your touch and your power. Ooh, Lord. That's going to cause financial gaps to be filled. I feel the move of God right now coming in. It's like, it's just like, I feel like there's just this, it's like hot oil. It's like, it's like my whole body's tingling. I feel this thing on my arms and my sides and my coming up. <sighs> Release upon you right now the anointing to prosper, the anointing to be successful, the anointing to find the right people, to move into the destiny plan that God has right now. No more wasted time. No more wasted days. No more lost time. No. No more waiting for something that's been promised. You've been chosen for the blessing. You've been chosen for the victory. You've been chosen to have a great life. 
And all those things that you want to do that at times flood your mind and you don't know how to actually get them done. You need to also have people to help you compartmentalize. Compartments, departments, compartments. Compartmentalize and departmentalize those things in... Um, uh, how can I say? Sequences and systems of production that they can actually get done. One or two at a time, two or three at a time, then next, and next, and next, then next, and next, and next. And you get this thing done, and you do that. You go here, you go there, you do that, and then you do the next thing. God doesn't want you to be stuck. Here's another thing that's horrible, that's so boring, that people actually end up staying in a, 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 a geographical environment or a place with people and you never move anywhere else. It's a big way. No, you don't need to be like that. It's a big world. See the world. Believe God to see the world. My God. The Alps in Switzerland. The Caribbean islands. Kind of hot there. It's kind of humid. You might want to go in the... I don't know when it's not so hot. When is it good? Probably in January, February is a good time. Right in the middle of the summer, man, it's hot. Boy, it's hot and humid. It's brutal. Ooh, Lord. Winter months might be good there. And like places like South Africa or East Africa where the beautiful animals are running. The mountains and uh, the Mediterranean coast, you know. Italy and Greece and places like that. Beautiful on the water there. South of France, I would imagine. Um, the cities you know. New York, Paris, London. That's okay. I've been to all of them. I, uh, quite a lot. Spent a lot of time in those cities. Man, you know, a lot of time. And I know them well. But all those places you wanted to go in the world. I've been to Australia. It's an amazing place, but it's far. It's like a 30-hour flight. You lose a day because you're going the other way and you lose the time zone. You get there, you, you're like so disoriented, you don't even know, you know, kind of take you a while to get adjusted. But a beautiful continent, beautiful things to see that are very unique. So if you want to go that far, fine. Southeast Asia has some of the best fruits in the world. Malaysia, uh, uh, I guess Indonesia would happen to. I haven't been to Indonesia, but I've been to Singapore. Thailand and uh, Malaysia from all the way from Kuala Lumpur all the way up to Penang Island. That's where the tsunami hit part and washed some people away when the big wave hit. It was terrible. But uh, it's an incline on the mountain. So most people were up high, so they weren't down where the water is. But anyone that was on that beach was called Miami Bay. I stood there. I took photographs there. I prayed there. I cried there. I thought, oh, that wave came in and whoever was on the beach level, whew, got washed away, were gone. But most people got to climb up the mountain or they were up there. And it didn't, the water couldn't get that high and they were safe. But the fruits that they have there, wow, life-giving. Something you could just eat a bunch of the fruit. We were driving in the car and I just ate all these exotic fruits. I, I don't even remember the names of all of them. And you feel like liquid life go into your blood and give you such energy. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I was like, what? And because they're so far away there, a lot of people don't import them over here. But, boy, those people are healthy because they have all that. That's an experience. America has many different terrains in it, different kind of climate. Southeast is the tropical beaches and... Uh, Mid, uh, all the way toward the Midwest out there is the mountains and then the West Coast, the ocean again and different things to see. It's a big world. Didn't plan to say that, but the Holy Ghost is talking here. So don't think that you're going to stay in one place and just everything's okay. You just staying there. It isn't, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't enough. But you need the right people to run with you in that. Hello. So I declare that the right people, there's an anointing for people, the right people, 
This is the word of the Lord here. Divine connections. This is part three. I'll continue in this. I just want to come on here and just exhort you for a few minutes on this topic. You, you need the right people in your life. Yes, you need money. Yes, you need health. And you need soul prosperity, peace of mind, and emotional intelligence, and well-being in your emotions and in your life and all that. But you need the right tribe to run with. And I'm glad that God's anointed me here to be a, a leader on the forefront of this to help you and you to connect with me. So write to me. Let me know. Uh, where you're at and those two are partners that are sowing the $77 seed or whatever the Lord would tell you if it's more or the amount God would give you I explained that I'll talk about that again on another broadcast I'll send you an ebook the benefits of excellence or the laws of success when you remind me and tell me your choice and I will be glad to send that to you in Jesus mighty name so the Lord bless you I'm believing God for you, for the right people, people that can help you succeed, people that can help you with the vision God's given you, they're coming forth into your world in Jesus' mighty name. Thomas Manton IV here. See you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Share this, and I'm going to continue in this flow. See you again tomorrow. Twanani Kesho. That's Swahili for see you tomorrow. God bless you. Love you much. And Hakuna Matata. Everybody knows that, right? There's no problem when you're on top, but you need to get there. And I'm here to help you do that. Isaiah 48, 17, the prophet helping you to profit and the Lord leading you in the way you should be going. And success is yours in Jesus' name. Love you much.